Welcome to We Choose to Thrive. This is our interview series with women who have decided to rise above the abuse, no matter what kind of abuse it was, of their past, and to live rich, full lives. We hope you will enjoy our interview series. Lisa, I wanted to thank you so much for being on this this video interview that we're having for We Choose to Thrive. You know, so many people have gone through so many things, and then when we can find our voice and gain the the courage to speak up. Our goal is in this book series is to be able to help people to to learn that they that they're not alone, number one. Yeah. And that there are other people that have gone through this and that they can rise above it too. And that's the whole goal and purpose of what we choose to thrive is all about is we can rise above whatever the abuses of the past. And abuse is abuse no matter what kind of abuse it is, it's still abuse, you know, and how we react to it and how we respond and what we do for ourselves to heal is so important. So give us a little bit of a story, Lisa, on the background, um, why you chose to be part of this book series and a little bit about your story of your, of your journey to, to being well. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this book. I feel really honored. Um, every time I, every chance I get to tell my story, I share it because um, I want to help as many women as possible. My abuse started about um, three years old when we would go to visit my, this particular aunt and cousin in the country called Baltimore, Quebec. And um, I was born much later in life. Like my dad, my parents had five kids one after the next, and then for 12 years, nothing. Then, <laughs> and then you. <laughs> and they got me 12 years later, and my younger brother after. And um, so by the time I was old enough, everybody had, they were adults. Everybody else in my family were adults, including my brothers and my sister, and and uh, my, my, my cousins, and, you know. So anyway, so three years old, and the very first memory I remember about this was my cousin, and um, he he said, "Come and sit on my lap." So you know, I'm a cute little three year old three year old girl, and come and sit on his lap. And then he was talking to me, you know, whispering things. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so adorable. And as he's talking to me, I was wearing a dress, and. Um, not to go into much details, but I uh, started to put his hands really in, up, no, under my dress and started to touch me inappropriately, my private parts. So that was my very first memory. And um, every time, this would happen every time we would go there. And we would go there quite often because <clears throat> my family, my mother's family were there in Baltimore, Quebec. And... Um, so we would go there maybe at least once a month, and this would happen all the time. And then there were other members in my family. Like I was surrounded by sexual abusers, and um, you know my uncles, and um, my dad was the greatest of them all in terms of abusing his children. I I I consider myself the lucky one because. My, my sister, she had developed five different personalities because mm. of his sexual abuse. I mean, he abused me as well. The thing that, I, I don't know, maybe the angels were protecting me. I don't know. But, yeah, so then I had, at nine years old, uh, there was another person that abused me. And um, he was another cousin. He was 19. And I was nine. My, it's a long story. But my little, co my other cousin, April, um, we were we were living with with them. So my mom died when I was seven. Oh, and, um, yeah, I was very young. She was forty seven. I was seven. So we slept. April and I slept in the same bed because there was not enough room for all of us. And one time, Danny was babysitting us, and he was nineteen. I was nine. And April was about 10, which was a year and a half older than I was. And we, April and I were playing in bed. You know, children are playing and we don't, we don't want to sleep. So he comes into the bedroom and he says, why aren't you 
why aren't you sleeping? And we said, well, we, we want to play. We're not tired. So he says, let's play house. I said, oh, okay. We both say, okay, yay. Well. He meant a different kind of house, huh? <laughs> completely different kind of house. And he says, well, April will be the mom and you'll be the child. That's okay. So he was sleeping. He's not sleeping, but he, um, he, he put, placed himself between April and I in the bed. And then there was silence. There was movement, but there was silence. I don't, it was dark, but the lights were not on. I don't know what was going on. And um, so, so then I was bored, right? And I said, hey, I want to play the mom. Big mistake. Big mistake. And then he said, well, at least you know how to French kiss. I said, French kiss? I don't know. So he taught me how to French kiss very well and then and and then you know worse things happen than that and so you know many times a lot of this when we talk about that there are lots of family members that that are a part of this and that it's generational and oftentimes these kind of abuses are passed on generationally yes. and and there comes a time and it feels, you know, because it happened when you're young, it feels like, because um, from my own experience too, that when, as we become young adults, we, we don't have a good frame of reference. We're familiar with this kind of thing. And so we attract the same kind of abuses when we start our grown-up relationships. Yes. And, and we see this time and again. So... As you became an adult, what was your experience? Did you, was that the same type of an experience for you? And how did you decide what came, how do we come around to the part where you decided to, nope, this is gonna stop and how do I, and what do I need to do to stop this and heal from it and, and be happy? Well, what happened to me was I was living with this secret till I was about 43, 44 years old. I had been attracting one unhealthy relationship after the next until I woke up, like, in 2010. Mm -hmm. I cried out to God, and I said, God, I don't want this life anymore. Please help me. And um, I had no idea that my behavior and my feelings were as a result of the sexual abuse in my past, you know, because the abuse was not something I was thinking about. You know, I knew it happened, but I had no idea that it that it, that it carries on, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> it was only until um, well, I started attending this particular church, and there was a program there, and it was called Freedom Session, and uh, that's when I I found out that oh my gosh. You see, like all my life, I felt broken. I felt like I was worthy of nothing. And I found my value in sex because mm -hmm. that's the only thing I knew. Mm -hmm. Right? To get attention, I had to have sex. Very common. Very common. He loved Becky. I had. It's what we equate to being that's what love is. If, if we don't get that, we're not loved. That's right. Yeah. So that was me. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, they, they're, in general, there are two ways to go if you've been abused. You, you become promiscuous or you become, you know, you don't have any interest in sex. Well, I had lots of boyfriends. I married very young. I cheated on my husband often. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, I had many, many boyfriends. So, yeah, back in 2010, when I cried out to God, it was, that's what saved my life really, because the path I was taking with that was painful. It, yeah, it was very, very painful. Yeah. So what, so you came to a very pain filled time of your life, you're in your 40s. Now it's time to where you're recognizing that that's not what you want for yourself anymore. So what, what did you tap into? You went to church and you, you, you were able to Kind of get a glimpse of a different side of the story but just hearing that 
and being aware of that is one thing. Doing something about it is another. What prompted you? What did you do? And what other resources did you tap into? Well, <clears throat> I realized that I have value. My value does not come from sex. Right? I've learned how to really love myself and, you know, accept what happened. Yeah, that, that was my lot in life. That was my experience. But I did not have to live with that past. You know, like I it did not have to let it affect me. Right. So I learned to love myself and appreciate who I was. And I learned to have values, you know. And, um, yeah, it was just an eye-opener for me to realize that, I, you know, just because those things happened to me, it didn't mean that I had to be unhappy forever because I can be happy on my own. Mm -hmm. I can be happy. I can love myself for real. And, I mean, I exist now. Like, I tried to commit myself three t kill myself three times, right, in the past. And I realized that life is so precious. And love comes from inside. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get love from everybody else and everything else, you know. But yes. loving myself is just the, the very first step of everything we've learned. Well, it's beautiful because you came to that point where you realized that. because, And that's kind of what happened for me. But I was 60 years old before I had the courage to tell my story. And the name of my book is called The Woman I Love. Because I learned that I had to come to love myself before I could be loved really, truly by anybody else. Yeah. And, you know, and to live um, a rich and full life, there has to be some major changes that we that we make in order to really enjoy that. And somehow, at some point in our life, we get that wake-up call, you know, yeah. that, okay, something's, there's something better than this, you know? Yeah. It's like when we really, really want something to change, something will happen. And, you know, I don't know if it's the universe or God or whatever, but something happens when we really want something different in our lives and we're really seeking mm -hmm to be happy or find real love or something like when we really are hungry for something, we usually find it. Yeah. Cause I think deep down in our core, we're always the basic of humanity. We're good. We're very good. We've just got off base and we, you know, maybe because it started so young as a child. And so therefore we don't have the, the self-confidence and the self-worth and all the things that are necessary because we have no frame of reference. It's yeah. what what we came up with thinking was normal. Yes. You know. Even though a part of us always said it was not normal, we don't we didn't have that anything of normal, what if, what is normal anyway, but we didn't have it to measure with. So was there books that you read, read counseling that you got? Um, anything that you would recommend to somebody just starting this journey? Well, in terms of, I've read many books. Um, the book um, Courage to Heal is wonderful. Oh, that one's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I've read your books, and <laughs> people should read your books. <laughs> um, and you've that? taken part in some writing some books, too. You told your story, didn't you? Oh, yes. I've told my story. I have my own book enough is enough and then I have some chapters and other books as well and more books that are coming out the, the thing is with sharing your story like it's most of us that have gone through abuse we keep it inside you know like for you Becky you haven't shared your story until you were 60 we need to share our story with at least one person sometimes we just we can't just keep it in I think we reason, we don't share because I have a graphic that I've I found when I was getting ready I when I for the last book launch and it had a picture of a girl wearing sunglasses and each lens was like painted white and one said the shame that um, the shame that they don't know the shame that they cannot see yeah. and for I think for most of us the shame the guilt and the fear the fear to speak up, the the shame over what it is. We think nobody, we don't realize often that anybody else has ever gone through something like this 
So there's a lot of shame associated with it. And there's huge fear over the repercussions for, for speaking up. For me, the healing came when I spoke up. When I shared my story, everything changed for me. And my life is happier because I went huge bouts of depression and, you know, that would constantly visit me. And I don't have that anymore. You know, and now it's, it's like it transformed my life. And there's been many, many people that have read my book and have, you know, because I was very, I've been active on Facebook and in different places and people have reached out to me. Thank you. Thank you for having the courage. Even men that have said that help, your story helped me to put my life together. So if we can affect one person, it's, thank you. It's good. But when you know that, your story can make a transformation in many lives if we let it be, then that's why there's so many of us that have have decided to, to be in the We Choose to Thrive series and all these other series of women coming out, even the news anymore. There's so much happening right, right now for the exposure because it's meant to change our world. You know, and it, it's time for that change. Yeah. So, Courage to Heal, your own books. Um, and your with, book. Yeah, your, my book as well. Um, is Louise there, Hay is another one, um, Heal Your Life, I believe, by Louise Hay. Uh, yeah, that one's yeah. very good. She's, they've got some, there's some magnificent resources out there. Oh, yes. And so, so and if... I really love that program I went to, that, that Freedom Session, and uh, that's a really wonderful program. So if somebody was just starting this healing journey, you know, they've never, never had spoken up, and, but they know that it was time. They, they just, their heart was telling them it's time to make a change. What would you say to somebody? Congratulations. The first step towards anything in life is to accept where you are now. Accept where, you know, the events that have happened. And then I'm a firm believer in forgiveness. Mm -hmm. letting go of all that pain inside that's that was a transformation for me is to when I, I let go you know I forgave my father I, I forgave everything everyone forgiveness we do and for forgiveness ourselves. does not mean that they were right in doing so mm -mm. forgiveness no. means that you've done this to me and I don't want to live with the pain anymore, so I'm deciding to forgive and let go because I want to live a greater life now. We do forgiveness for ourselves. Yep, it is you know, for that's, us. Yeah, right. And what they do with it or not do with it is totally up to them. Mm -hmm. It's what we do for us because we can't be whole. We can't be complete until we, we get to that point where we can do that. Yep. So, any other words that you would like to share with somebody that's beginning that journey? I would just say keep talking. Keep releasing all the pain and all the secrets you have inside because that's going to be transformational. There's a lot of, lot of discussion about vibrational frequencies of our world. And yeah. in doing some research, I was, I was struck by value to the, the frequencies of our emotions. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's it was very striking to me that anger, fear, guilt, and shame were like 20, 30, 40, 50 on the scale of emotional well-being. Oh, yes. Courage is like 300. So as you get through the, feel, the feelings of shame and guilt and fear and rise through with courage, you've gone from the 20, 30, 40, 50 to 300. Love is at is measured at 500, but they say that for every person that chooses to make that change and come up to the courage part, that those vibrational frequencies expand out to the world and affect multitudes of other people. It certainly does. And to me, that's just fascinating, you know, yeah. and even though we may not really know it, our world is vibrations you know every plant has a vibrational frequency every every living person has a vibrational frequency and and to know that 
if we change, if we have children, our children are impacted by that change. It passes down and we can change the way so that it doesn't pass generationally anymore. You know, as we rise up, it helps others to rise as well. It does because, I mean, this might appear to be physical, but really, you know, if you look at it really carefully, it's, we're all energy. Yeah, right. right. And you know, what we put out there, it comes back to us and it goes out into the world. That's Very much. It's pretty amazing. So I appreciate so much for you taking the time to be a part of this interview. And, you know, it's, it's thrilling to me to, to meet people like you who I know you have a coaching program going now too for women. Yeah, yeah that's what I do. That's, I, I just want to help women. But thank you so much for being part. Thank you for watching this We Choose to Thrive interview. If you are currently in an abusive situation, please seek help immediately. Our purpose in creating this book and video series is to form a sisterhood of support. Know that abuse is abuse no matter what kind it is. The stories in this We Choose to Thrive series are as many and varied as the people in it. If this resonates with you, we welcome you and invite you to join us. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing this interview, please feel free to share.